Sharing a file in Figma seems like such an easy task, but I review hundreds of designers' work and I review hundreds of students' coursework, and you wouldn't believe how many people actually get this wrong. So today I want to go over how and why you want to change the way you send your files in Figma. And at the end of the video, I'm going to show you how to avoid a common mistake that ended up costing one of my clients over $500,000 just because they were sharing files in Figma incorrectly. So I've got a Figma file open here and it's a, a community file from Apple where they've shared their design system. And let's just assume that we are a product designer and we're working on the sidebar component. Now at the end of a sprint, your design manager has asked you to share what you've been working on with them so that they can review it. And this is what most people would do. They'll go to the top right, click share and click on copy link and then they will send the link to whoever it is that they need to forward it to. But if I was to open this link, you'll see that Figma just gives me an overview of the entire page of the file you've been working on. You can imagine how confusing that might be when someone's landing on this page and they just don't know where they should be looking. And there's a really simple trick that you can do to improve the way you're sharing files uh, in Figma. So if we go back into the design file and go back to the sidebar component, if you click on an object in Figma and then you press share, what Figma will do is it will zoom directly into that object and share the exact location within that link. So if I was to click on that link now, you can see that it's gone straight to the sidebar component as opposed to a very zoomed out overview of what the page looks like. This is especially useful if you're sharing your Figma design with a lot of different people and they might not get direct communication with you to ask you exactly where the design is actually located. And for companies like Apple, uh, you can imagine they'll have a lot of offshore teams uh, in places like India, China, UK, where people will be working in different time zones. And if you can just provide that extra bit of clarity, it will just make the whole development process a lot simpler. So the other thing with sharing in Figma is that a lot of people will just put an email address and invite people to their file. And this could end up costing you a lot of money because Figma actually charges you per editor's seat. So let's say I am gonna share this Figma file with joe at yahoo.com and I've set the permission to can edit and click invite. Joe will now be able to edit this file, but it also means you'll be paying for an additional seat within your Figma environment. So if you're on an individual license and you ended up inviting 10 different people to edit your file in Figma, you actually will end up paying for 10 separate licenses because you got 10 different editors. And this is where one of my clients, they didn't control who they were sending out edit access to, and they ended up sharing it with thousands of different people and built up a bill of over $500,000. And unfortunately, I do know many other people who have been stung by Figma just because of the way they've set up their payment structure. So next time, if someone's asking you to share a Figma file, make sure you're only inviting them as a viewer and not an editor, unless you're happy to absorb the cost of having an extra editor within your Figma environment. So hopefully now you know how to send a link directly to a frame that you've been working on and how to avoid incurring additional charges within your Figma license. Now, if you want to check out an advanced concept in Figma for auto layout, you can click on this video here. Alternatively, if you want to know about the basics of auto layout, you can click on this video here.